This video is about designing and printing a um, nice seed sorter so I can sort out the whole garden for the year and um, figure out what I'm going to plant. It was a fun little project. Um, I designed it up in the Libre and 3D printed on my Creality K1. And you can see it's um, really a super simple project that came. I really like it. It came out nice to go with, you know, my gardening stuff that I do. And this is the other one I have a video about. If you, uh, you know, look back through my videos, you'll see for a little caddy for when you're planting out in the garden just to grab what you want. But I've got so many different packs and trying to plan the garden out for the year. It's, um, you know, this will make it a lot easier, I figured. And it's something that could be modified to have, you know, less bins, more bins, different size bins, and used for different purposes too. But I did have a power outage when I was printing that one there. And then when it came back on, I had a um, clogged nozzle I ran into. So I'm going to have, um, you know, one short one for now until I print another one. Those were the first two test pieces that I did. And I, I had a little bit of mess up on them. Uh, you know, just prototypes. And they don't take long to print. And there's the final version. It's extremely lightweight and uh, really, you know, just simple simple easy to put together and easy to um you know adapt to different size things and then i just use some fiberglass fence posts these are those ones i use out in the garden to support the plants i get them at tractor supply and i just cut them off to the length i wanted them to uh, hold everything all these bins together so you know just simple two ends and couple pieces between them and here I am while I'm working on this I'm doing the last print this is just a handle to be able to grip onto it and hold it that fence that fiberglass you don't want to grab that sometimes you get little strands out of it and you know it's slippery and stuff so in the meantime I'm gonna go back and I just cut these posts to length I put a stop on the saw cut them to length using the saw and this fiberglass stuff is nasty so you want to make sure you have some kind of a um, mask on for breathing but they cut nice with uh, you know just standard saw they do give you a little tiny bit of a burr when you cut them cut a tear at the end of it that you want to get rid of and just going to go over to that uh, harbor freight sander <laughs> this thing's been pretty amazing I never thought it would last so long I don't know I did a video maybe five years ago I bought it figuring it would last for a couple weeks and uh, still going strong no matter how bad I beat it it's pretty amazing for you know, a little cheap Harbor Freight thing. In the meantime, it's just finishing up my handle there so I can get ready to just start doing the final testing. So now it's a matter each of those rails has a uh, pocket that's counter bored into the 3D print. It's printed right in and it's just a, you know, a way to bottom them out. Handle fit right on there, perfect. Oh, I just got to slide one end on and then put the other end on just to test it and make sure I cut everything the right length. But at this point, I wish I, um, I wish I had like four hands, four arms and hands to put this thing together. But let's stand it up on end to make it a little bit easier because I'm not putting hardware in it yet. It's just kind of the test fit. And that's what it's going to look like. Super lightweight, really nice, strong. And then these bins are supposed to drop right in there, which they actually fit really nice, tight, fit, fit good, don't rattle around or anything. And I did, I 3D printed one, one with a green. I ran out of orange, so I just tried doing a collar swap because I only had green left at the time. So I've got one weird one. But basically, you can see everything's going to work. Now it's time to... I've got to put a uh, clearance hole for a self-tapping screw in the end of each of these. So I'm just going to go out and throw them in my old South Bend lathe. Uh, this thing is from the 1950s. It's, it's older than me, I think, and uh, still works good. It's, you know, it's really it's kind of like an antique that's uh, made to last 200 years, I think. All the old, uh, you know, cast iron and the old drum switches and the old, uh, you know, funky looking little lights and stuff on it really um really a great machine to have and i mean they're not too expensive if you can find one but boy are they nice to have anyhow i put the um i put the pilot holes in the end of each of them and now it's time to, to start assembly 
So they just go into that pocket there. And then I had these little um, truss head screws I had laying around that I'm going to use. And the clearance hole is just, um, you got to be careful. You got to make sure that you get it tight enough that it won't strip out and loose enough that it won't crack the fiberglass on the end. It's kind of like, a, you know, do some test pieces until you get a proper size hole for the screw you're using. But basically, it's just a matter of um, five screws in from each end to hold everything together. And other just those pliers have smooth jaws, so they won't scratch anything. And there you can see really simple assembly. And you know, finding having those black screws laying around worked out good. I didn't have to buy anything. Now I'll slip that handle on and just go back and do the other side. And this is the trickiest part because they're all the exact same length trying to get them started at the same time. And you can't really, everything's so precision, you can't really move it too much. But be persistent and it will go. And then again, just five more screws in this side. And I did find out once you get these screws all in, it's best to set it on the flat tabletop and then loosen the screws and t do a final tightening so that it sits perfectly flat because uh, my first attempt here it had twisted a little bit when I tightened the screws so I went back loosened them up and you know everything sat flat to keep the handle in place just a little bit of super glue I put a piece of blue tape on there to uh, to show where it's got to go and also catch any extra super glue so there won't be a mess I'll spin that out down there a little bit get the glue all spread throughout there And then just peel that tape off to take any extra glue that was uh, squeezed out or pushed out around the edge there. So now it's just a matter of letting that glue set up for, you know, an hour or so because I I didn't, can't get accelerator in there. So there it is. Um, and these bins just slop her, fit right in there. And you can see I've got the... Um, the uh, orange bins and i was gonna paint those shafts a different color but then i decided to go with the gray on them because uh that's the color of stuff in my shop and then this one I had i didn't like that green in there so i'll go with this brown one so it looks like i got the orange and gray and wood color so you know that pretty much matches the shop too so I'm real happy how it came out and it is super lightweight and I just thought I'd share this idea. I mean, it could be made out of wood. It could be made out of different materials. But 3D printing is just so much fun. I'm just enjoying it. It's so relaxing. You you know, you just draw something up, send it to the printer, and you, a little while later, you just pick it out, and you got it. And this would be a real handy addition to the garden. I'll, I'll upload the files to that uh, Thingiverse. I've got a, a section on there where I've got all my files now. So... If anybody's interested in you know making this or you know you can make your own it's a little different size or you know different length and easy to modify so there it is uh it's another fun little project to uh, make it through the winter with and you know i'm really having a lot of fun with this uh, 3d printing it's just instant satisfaction and you know nothing's got to be painted or anything it's all done when it's done it all comes out nice that K1 really was a good buy. Anyhow, you can see I've got to really start sorting everything now and get through it. Um, this would even be good for like recipe cards or something like that. I was thinking if you size it properly. Let's go upstairs. I wanted to show you this uh, orchid that my wife has in bloom. She's got a whole bunch of them in bloom now, but I just love the colors on this one. So just figured I'd go up there and take a couple pictures of it with the orchid on the table there. Just show you how you know how nice it came out, and uh, this is it. It's really simple to make a couple 3D printed parts and some pieces of uh, fence post, electric fence post, and you know that's it. Perfect uh, way to sort your whole garden out by beds and everything else. So just thought I'd share this, and you know if anybody else has an interest in making one, I'll I'll put these files up on Thingiverse. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.